Now, the budget process. How are we going to prepare the budget? So let me give you an example. So in my uh, old company, this is the process that we will do. Four or five months before the end of the year, they will say, okay, we are going to create our budget for next year. So we will come up with something called budget proposal. So the meaning of it, we say, our goal for next year, we want to do one, two, three, four, five things. These are our goals. Now, we have four or five departments. For your department, this is your goal for the next year. And you are, are going to tell us exactly how much it is going to cost for, for your department to accomplish the goal. For example, I was working in an auditing firm. So we say, our goal for next year is that we need your department to audit about maybe 100 firms during next year. So if you are going to audit 100 firms, you are going to need employees. How many employees are you, are you going to need? I would say, okay, six per. How much are they going to cost? We have managers, they are going to take salary. We have uh, supervisors, they are going to take different salary. We have the employees, they are going to take different salary. And at the same time, we have to do training for them. We have to pay for their medical insurance, for their dental insurance, for their life insurance. We have to pay for their vacation days. We have to consider all that. And at the same time, if they are taking any special certifications like the CMA, they want to study for the future of So what will happen? This is the positive proposal. They will send this to all the employees saying, please give us exactly how much you are going to need during next year. Are we going to do any training? Are we going to attend any conferences? Are we going to need any special certifications? So we will tell them, these are the, the money that we need. And after that, they will say, okay, we know how much your salary and we know the cost of your benefits. We are going to add all these numbers together and we are going to start the process of budget negotiation. We are going to say, okay, we need all these employees, the 60 employees, but for us to do 100 firms, we think that we need another 5 employees. So can we get some additional money for these employees? At the same time, we need to get some additional money to give some bonuses or we need to increase the salary of these employees. So we start the budget negotiation between the different departments with the top management. Next step, we will say, okay, after we approve it, okay, we think, okay, what you gave us is exactly the budget that we want, the numbers are correct, we will be thinking for your maybe auditing departments, you need about 500,000. We will say, okay, now we are going to review it and approve it. We are going to review it to make sure that everything is fine and approve it from the top management. Now, the next step, we are going to use the budget. We are going to, okay, say, okay, after four or five months, what happened? Do you really, really need 65 degrees or maybe you need less? If you need less, okay, in that way you change the budget, budget. So you do budget revision. You change your budget to make sure that your budget is really meeting the goal and at the same time is following the, your operation. So these are the steps. Budget proposal, budget negotiation, budget review and approval and after that revision based on the operation. Now, cost standards. How much an operation or a service should cost? So if you think about it, any operation that you have, how much is going to cost us? If we are doing an audit, how much the audit should cost? Well, we have the, the salary of the manager of the audit, we have the salary of the supervisor, of the employees, we have the costs for all the materials that we are using, we have the cost of the electricity. Look, in that way you are accounting for all the costs of your operation to be able to figure out how much the service will cost, like what? What about creating a car? You need to say, okay, for creating a car, I need the raw materials. I need the wheels. I need the cost for all to cover the cost of running the machines to be able to assemble the car. I need employees who are working on assembling the cars. I need to account for all the costs in my product or my service. So how can you do that? You do that by creating something called cost standards. The meaning of it that you need to take each operation and figure out exactly what are the steps or what are the, the uh, process that you are going to use to create this product or service and in that way you need to, to create a, a cost for a cost standard for each item. So you will say, for the car, you need to understand how much the cost standard, what's the meaning of cost standard? It's how much is going to cost us to get the wheels for the car? How much is going to cost us to assemble the car? How much is going to cost us to hire these employees to to work on assembling the cars. So you understand the cost standard for each uh, item or for each uh, step in manufacturing the product or providing the service. And when you are doing this, you can use one of four ways. You can say, okay, who is going to say how much is going to cost us to buy these wheels? 
Is it the top management they are going to say the cost to buy the wheat is 5,000? Or is it the equipment they are saying, okay, we think that it's going to cost us 5,000 to buy it, or 4,000? So let's think about it in a different way. Let's say that right now you are working in a company, and they say, we are going to give you, look, they are thinking about cost. They are saying, we, one of the costs that you have for you to run the operation is we are going to give you money to cover the cost for you going home and coming back. So your transportation cost. So the company will say, we are going to give you money to cover your transportation cost. But we think that every day you just need 50 Syrian bound to cover your cost going home and coming back. Look, the top management is its authoritative standard. The top management is deciding what is the standard cost. You'll be like, but why? You'll be like, because we think that you are going to take maybe two, uh, two buses to go home and two buses to come back, so we think it's going to cost you between 10 to 5 for each bus, so we are giving you 50 now, 50 in Syrian bond. And look, we are generous. But they are thinking about it. But you come to you, if it's part participative process, you'll be like, no. I want to really tell you how much it's going to cost me to go and come and back. For me, I really take one bus, I take another bus, I take another bus, I take three buses going and coming back. It's really late for that, I take a taxi. So going, it's costing me 30 Syrian bond and coming back, it's costing me about like 70. So in that way, it's costing me really 100. So look, the management will say, we think this is the cost and you need to follow it and you may not be happy because you say no, it's going to cost more and you, most of the time, if it's even costing you 100, you're like, no, it's costing me 200 why? because I want to take taxi going home, taxi coming back, right? if they say, okay, well, you decide the cost and the, you say, well, I really want my own jet to fly home so if they give you the right to do the cost, you do whatever you want if they do the cost, they will try to squeeze as much as they, they want for them not to uh, pay more so you need to think about it. Is it going to be authoritative or participative or, uh, way of uh, creating the cost standards? Or we, it can be ideal or reasonably attainable. What's the meaning of ideal? They, they will say, okay, we are going to say how much it's going to cost you to go. We think it's going to just cost you 10 Syrian pounds. 10 Syrian pounds? Are you, are you like, crazy? How is it going to cost us 10 Syrian pounds? Like, because you take this one bus, you just pay 5 Syrian bomb and it's going to take you like 2 around Syria and after that you are going to go because that way you are going to take the same bus and you, that bus is going to get home but you will be like, but maybe I will take this bus and this bus will be like okay, I'm not going to go all the way, you need to go and take another bus something will happen to the bus maybe I need to, be, to take a taxi because I need to be home early you be like, no, 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 we are speaking about the ideal situation that you just take this bus, you stay on this bus for an hour and a half and after that you get home so they are speaking about the ideal cost. For example, if the, you have tires for your car, they are speaking about the ideal cost. They are going to get all the tires, all the tires are going to work if they don't have any issues. So they are speaking about the ideal cost. Reasonably at the end, they are saying no. If you are going to go home, maybe something going to happen. Um, maybe you need to take a taxi. Maybe you need to take a, a four or five buses. So that we are going to do 75 Syria. Because we are saying it's reasonably at the end. If something happens, you have extra money to, to play with. If you are buying the tires, we are going to say that 5% of these tires are not going to work and we need you to throw them in the trash. So in that way, we are going to say that the cost of the tire is not 5,000, it's maybe 6,000 because some of the tires are not going to work and the other 1,000 is going to cover the cost of the additional tires that they are not going to work. So you are always thinking, are they giving you ideal or perfect? Cost standard, or are they giving you reasonably attainable cost standard? You need always to think about it. Most of the time, you, your cost standard should be participative. The employees should, they should participate in creating the cost standards because they understand the operation, and at the same time, always think about making it reasonably attainable. Because in that case, the employees they will be able really to reach it, but it's not ideal. Because most of the time, you are not running a perfect operation. Now, if you are thinking about, okay, now we understand the cost standard, how are we going to do it for raw materials, for direct labor, and how are we going to understand uh, the sources for these standards? The first thing for direct materials. Let's come back to the car. If we have the car and we have the wheels that we are going to do for the cars. So, how much is the cost for the wheel? 
If you think about it this year, you say, okay, well, the cost for the wheels, it's the cheapest cost. Go and buy me the cheapest uh, wheel and I'm going to have it in the car. No, no, no. You don't start with, 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 the, with the price. You start with the quality. Okay, if you are going to get these wheels for the car, you need to have quality A, quality B, quality C, quality D. For each quality, you are going to have different prices. So first you look at the quality. What quality are you trying to get? So you say, okay, for these cars, they are pretty nice cars, they are going to be Ferrari, so we are going to have quality A. Perfect. Next, number one is how many? Because maybe if you are getting large amount of uh, we, uh, tires, you are going to get discount. So you say, how many? You are like, okay, we are going to get for our operation 20,000. Perfect. Now you say, okay, how, how much the price? See, you start with quality, quantity to the price. So these are the steps. This for raw materials, so in that way, you will know exactly for these 20,000, each one is going to cost us maybe 4,000 or uh, 4,500. So this is the process. So first, in that way, you identify the cost for your raw materials. Now, now next step, you will understand the cost for direct labor. So for direct labor, the way that you are going to do it, you are going to say, okay, for each car, we need 100 hours of three employees working on the car. So 100 hours of three employees is 300 hours. We are giving each employee five serial rounds for each hour. So in that way, we are going to pay how much? We are going to pay uh, uh, 1,500 for the cost for the operation. See how we are going to say? Five serial rounds, we need 300 hours. So each car is going to cost us over 1,500 to be able to assemble them. So this is how you do the, the cost, the standard cost for the labor. Now you will say, okay, what are the sources that I'm going to use to get this information, to get how much the labor is going to cost, how much the direct material is going to cost me? You can use one of these uh, four ways. You can say activity analysis. So you are looking at the, the car. How are you going to do the car? You are going to have the employees assembling everything. You are going to have the machines working on it. You are going to have the raw materials. So you say, I have the cost of my raw materials. I have the cost of the employees, I have the cost of the machines. I put them all together and that will be you are analyzing the activity. Saying, here are our activities, these are the costs for all the activities, so in that way this is the cost for the standard cost for each car. This is number one. You use the activity, you understand the activity. The cost for each item in the activity, and in that case you'll be able to understand the standard cost for the whole activity. Now, number two, you use historical data. You say, last year, or this year, we really, this is the first time we are going to use standard cost. Last year, for each car, for each car that we created, we think that the cost is about maybe 15,000. So, for each car, the cost is about 15,000. So, in that case, this year, we are going to use the same cost. We are using historical data. We are saying, what was the cost before, and we are going to use Another example, if you are an airline company, you say, what is the cost for our gas this year or for our uh, oil that we need for our flights this year? Like, how much the average cost last year? You will make it was about $80 for each car. So you make perfect. So this year is going to be about 80 So you can use historical data. Or you can use market expectation and strategic decisions. What's the meaning of it? You say, what is the, the market the, the price? What are they saying in the market is the price? So they will like, okay, well, the price for, uh, in the market is this, so that we use whatever price in the market. Or you can use benchmark. You say, okay, in general, if you compare our operation to other uh, factories, for example, I was working on a case in Jordan, I was trying to create a company that will manufacture t-shirts. So then we said, okay, this is the first time we are going to do t-shirts. What is the cost of a t-shirt? I don't know. So I went to another factory in Syria and I said, how much is it costing you to make a, a, a t-shirt? He said, oh, it's about maybe 500 Syrian. I was like, perfect. I went to another one. They said 400. I went to another one. 450. So in that way, I have like what benchmark. The meaning of benchmark, it's a reference to go to, to refer to. So I know now it's 500, 400, 450. So I, I know the range. So I told them it's between 400 to 500 the cost of producing. T-shirt. Can you see? You are using benchmark. You are looking at other operations and understanding what's the cost of them.